Welcome to Mint Budget Agenda 2011, Driving Inclusiveness of Industrial Growth. This is the first of the four-part series of panel discussions across the country. Today, here in Bangalore, we discuss union budget and the new growth centers. We'll try and explore how does the budget become relevant for entrepreneurs like Krishnan or for Manish, or for growth centers emerging, which are new realities. Because even if you look at it today, the budget expenditure still will be dominated by Bihar, UP, Madhya Pradesh, and so on. So there's no new dimension emerging to the budget. It's still only in space concentrated at a particular level. Now, how does it go about doing that? How does one make budget relevant for new businesses is something that we'll, we'll, uh, we'll discuss today. Uh, I'll start with uh, Manish. Okay. Thanks, Asim. Um, I, I basically work in labor markets, so I will, I will sort of focus on human capital. Um, you know, we are a child of lower hiring standards. We have hired somebody every five minutes for the last five years. But we have only hired 5% of the kids, uh, actually 3% of the kids who came to us for a job. And I think the biggest lesson of the last 20 years, you know, and, you know, 2011 is the 20th anniversary of economic reforms. And the biggest lesson of the last 20 years is that growth actually doesn't lead to poverty reduction as much. Um, poverty reduction comes from access. Um, growth is a necessary but not sufficient condition for poverty reduction. So poverty reduction comes from what I call the three E's, education, employment, and, and employability. And I think the geography of work um, is something we haven't thought hard enough uh, about when we think about growth clusters or we just think about growth. because. From my perspective, why we've only hired 3% of the kids who came to us is because there's a mis there are three problems with our geography of work. One, obviously, is the physical geography of work. You know, in the next 20 years, the five states of Gujarat, Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, and Karnataka will acquire, will account for 45% of GDP growth, but only 5% of the population growth. While UP, Bihar, Odisha, Madhya Pradesh, and... Um, Rajasthan will be actually 45% of the population growth, but only 7% of the GDP growth. So there's this massive geographic mismatch um, between where the jobs and economic energy is going to be and where the kids are going to be. And, and so from my vantage point, the most important decision that a child makes is obviously choosing your parents wisely, but the second most important decision you make is choosing where you're born, uh, because in the next 20 years, that is going to matter. The next is obviously the geography of work as in sectors. Only 11% of India works in manufacturing, 58% of us work in agriculture, and 93% work in the informal sector. So the geography of work sort of needs to be shaken up very badly. And the third, which is obvious to everybody, is the mismatch in skills. You know, the, the, the skills that people are coming out of the education system or the vocational training system are somewhat, there is a gap between what employers want. So, there are three problems. There's a matching problem, which is connecting labor supply to demand. There's a mismatch problem, which is repairing supply for demand. And there's a pipeline problem, which is preparing supply for demand. And I distinguish between repair and prepare. And so from my vantage point, I actually sort of a little bit will disagree with um, Haseeb in saying that, yes, the amount of money in the budget does not matter. But how you spend the money does matter, particularly in human capital. Because you know the next wave of public policy impact doesn't lie in poetry. It lies in plumbing. Um, you know, and how we're going to get teachers to work in school, how we're going to convert NRDGS into an apprenticeship program, how we're going to do public-private partnerships and soft infrastructure. So I think too much of the budget today sort of gets confiscated in programs or salaries or stuff which are not moving the needle really on human capital. And, and finally, you know, it's not more cooks in the kitchen, it's a different recipe. You know, the demographic dividend isn't about more people, it's about productive people. I'll move on to uh, Krishnan Ganesh who, and basically seek the thing that how does one, how does the budget uh, appeal to an entrepreneur like him who doesn't seek any support from the budget but what kind of enabling environment would it, uh, can the budget create to multiply people like him who, who kind of, who generate growth in the system today? 
any call center industry or any IT services industry you take, we start doing multiple things as a corporate or as a startup or as a industry, which actually should be done by the government. For example, uh, we have full capacity for power generation in our own office, okay, right? which fundamentally is not the need that is required, it need not be there at all. Okay, right? We have full transport that picks up people from home and drops them right up to home because if we want them to come, the chances are they will not be able to come on time, they may not even take up the job, it will be impossible. Okay, right? Now, what the BPO, call center, KPO, or even my latest tutor, Vista, has done is uh, taken these for granted as challenges that the government is not going to do and found shortcuts and our solutions on our own. So we, we generate our own power, we have double the capacity, we have backup, we store the diesel, we do that. Similarly, we have vans, we have buses that uh, cart people around. Okay, right? All of that worked for some time. In 2000, when the BPO call center industry started, we, we did all of that, not we, the industry, all our competitors, everybody did that. But imagine the cost, the cost of doing all this. And it took just five years from an industry that was a sunrise industry employing uh, lakhs of people to become uncompetitive in the world market. Today, people know the voice call centers, the jobs are shifting to Philippines. We are almost seeing no growth because the cost has gone up. The, the industry is forced to do, uh, play the role of what the government would have normally done. And take Philippines for an example. In Philippines, in call centers, they have so many advantages. Fundamentally, they don't bus people to the office and back. The infrastructure is fine. They don't have any generator. Look at their cost competitiveness vis-a-vis -vis India. Harish. In 1991, we had a seminal budget, and now we're going to see a seminal budget this year as well. In many ways, uh, borrowing the name of that wonderful Hindi movie, Bees Sal Bad, I think you have an equivalent combination. At that time, you had an economist, I think, as finance minister, and a yes. politician as prime minister. You have exactly the opposite this year around. <laughs> but hopefully, that combination produces very good results for us. Um, having said that, I think uh, from the consumer goods industry, the one point I want to make is that the India story has been a story of growth and a large part of that growth has been driven by consumer confidence in the domestic Indian market. Unlike China and unlike many other economies in the world which are growing rapidly today, I think India is fortunate to have a very large consuming population. And the story of consumer confidence is I think the story that this budget should protect at all costs. You know, many, many years ago, I used to attend these uh, budget lectures delivered by uh, Nani Palkiwala in Bombay, uh, organized with the Forum of Free Enterprise. And he used to say that there are only two kinds of budgets that finance ministers can produce. There is a budget, which is the tinkerer's budget, small tinkerings around uh, parameters. And there is a budget, which is the architect's budget, where you architect for growth. And I believe this budget should architect for growth, for supporting and protecting the India growth story, and for protecting consumer confidence. Here, we'll take a break.